My name is Maddie Quirk and I work for Ausveg. Um, today I'll be talking about exotic leaf miners and giving an update on the Hort Innovation Funded Project for Control, Eradication and Preparedness for Vegetable Leaf Miner. So exotic leaf miners are um, a major pest of agriculture in many parts of the world. They're on the Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment's Top 40 Pests list. Vegetable leaf miner Lyria Miser sativi was detected in Sasha on Queen, in Queensland in 2015 after um, multiple years of spread throughout the Torres Strait Islands. Um, serpentine leaf miner Lyria Miser um, huidabrensis was detected in Greater Sydney in October this year. And as of today, we've just found information um, that it's been detected in Fassivern Valley Queen, in Queensland. And I'll talk a little bit about more those detect a little bit more about those detections later. American serpentine leaf miner Liriomyza trifolii is not currently present in Australia, but it's found in neighbouring countries such as Indonesia. So exotic leaf miners have very similar life cycles, an egg, larva, pupa and adult phase. It's a very short life cycle that can have many generations within a growing season. What you can see there in that little gif is the larva, and that's the most disruptive stage because it tunnels between the top and bottom layer of the leaf. And as it mines through the leaf, it creates these spirals known as leaf mines. There's also additional damage known as stippling. Um, and this is caused by the adult female poking holes in the, in the leaf to feed or to lay eggs. Leaf miners all have a very um, wide host range. Some hosts of major concern include vegetables such as potatoes, pumpkin, capsicum, leafy veg, and many others, as well as melons, um, cut flowers, and a number of weed hosts. So at the plant level, the impact caused by leaf mining can disrupt photosynthetic activity. It can lead to stunted plant growth, um, fruit failure and crop losses, or even crop death in heavily mined crops. Um, at the business level, detection of exotic leaf miners may lead to possible farm quarantine, yield reduction, loss of marketability, even for healthy plants, um, if there's obvious damage on the leaf, and costly pest management as a result of resistance to insecticides. If the wrong insecticides are used, beneficial parasitoid wasps may be knocked out, causing higher numbers of leaf miners. So these pests can cause significant impacts, particularly early on in their establishment, before we can adjust management plans to conserve um, these parasitoid wasps. Parasitoid wasps are an effective natural control option for exotic leaf miners as part of an integrated approach, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so as we know, surveillance is a time heavy, expensive task, and we don't wanna be saying that you should be spending 24 hours a day looking out there because it's purely not practical. So what we can do is target our surveillance by knowing a little bit about um, exotic leaf miners and what we're looking for. So exotic leaf miners, uh, they're tiny flies that create significant damage, which I've already talked about. So it's much more effective to focus surveillance efforts on the leaf rather than focusing on the fly. And this is because the leaf mines are long lasting, whereas the flies are, are quite small and short lived. And there's no efficient trapping system available to lure these flies in. So visual surveillance is really where we want to focus our efforts. So when should you be looking? Well, we know a lot about the biology of this pest as it has been studied extensively overseas. So we know um, what temperature it grows at and what temperature kills it, but we can, and we can add this to what we know about Australia's climate and get a prediction of where in Australia and at what times of the year in Australia um, this pest can grow and reproduce. So here are the results of that for vegetable leaf miner, Liriomyza sativi. The dark red indicates periods where the pest won't grow because it's either too hot or too dry or too cold. But the green areas are conditions that are really suitable for Liriomyza sativi. And you can see that pretty much all of coastal Queensland is in this green zone. And we can look at what time of the year this occurs. So you can see from these models of Toowoomba, Bundaberg and Bowen, um, it is predicted that risk will be high year round. In Toowoomba, highest risk periods for Liriomyces sativi are predicted to be the late spring to early summer periods and late summer to early autumn. In Bundaberg, risk is predicted to be highest in late spring to midsummer and um, lowest in the winter and um, peak summer periods. And then in Bowen, the risk is predicted to be high year round with um, peaks over that summer period indicated by the darker green as opposed to the lighter green. As far as where you should be looking, you should be looking in your high risk crops. And just a reminder of the host preference for Liriomyces sativi on the screen here. 
Even within your farm, you can be more targeted in the area that you survey by considering spread pathways. Um, these pests are heavily human mediated, mediated um, as well as a little bit of natural spread by wind. So if you consider your farm, it means that you should focus on areas that are um, nearest to transport routes and unloading areas, um, as these are the most likely spots that you get an incursion. And it's also worth focusing on the incoming wind side of the paddock too. So through our project, we have developed survey, uh, survey guidelines as part of a preparedness plan for industry to help them undertake surveillance. A link to this resource will be um, uh, included in our follow-up email. So now we've talked a little bit about surveillance and um, establishment and spread risk of leaf miners. So what might management look like in Australia should these pests establish further? Well, we know from overseas that effective natural control of leaf miner comes from parasitoid wasps, which I've mentioned a little bit, but I'll go into a bit more detail. So through the project, we undertook field work in the Torres Strait and found that there were already at least six species of parasitoid wasps that were controlling populations of vegetable leaf miner in the incursion zone. We also found that in some cases they were controlling up to 80% of all the flies in that hotspot. Um, through the project, we also did a review of the literature and found that Australia has at least 50 different wasp species that could control exotic leaf miners if they established. And um, a number of them are already controlling vegetable leaf miner Lyrimizer sativa overseas, including Opius, Diglyphus and Hemitarsinus. So this may be important in helping slow um, the vegetable leaf miner spread. And knowing that we have these options um, of biological control to control leaf miner in Australia, it means that we need to um, be, we need to choose chemicals that will minimise disruption to parasitoid populations. So this means avoiding non-selective chemicals like OPs and SPs and considering the off-target effects of chemicals targeting other pests. We also have to consider the life cycle of exotic leaf miners. So chemicals need to be either systemic or translaminar to target the larvae inside the leaf. And we know from overseas that all three species of leaf miner can develop resistance to chemicals quite readily. This means we just have to be more mindful of our choices. Plant Health Australia has been working hard to submit minor use permits to cover vegetable, nursery, melons, potatoes and onions. They considered all of the information out there when selecting the pesticides and developing APVMA permits and we currently have permits for um, listed, listed here for sativa and for other leaf miners. Um, for more information on chemical control, you can take a look at our management plan that we've developed through the project and it'll be sent in the follow-up email. And I know that industry and government are working to develop some permits for um, serpentine leaf miner as well. So on that note, um, I'm just going to give a quick situation update of um, Lyromyza weedabrensis serpentine leaf miner. So there was a detection of um, this pest on field grown vegetables in Western Sydney and it was reported on the 22nd of, no of October in 2020. And a sample was taken and identified as serpentine leaf miner on the 29th of October. So that diagnosis was confirmed on the 2nd of November this year and following that further samples were collected from nearby properties um, and there have been an additional 12 infested properties and 23 additional suspect detections on, on further properties. Um, on, no on the 13th of November serpentine leaf miner was then detected in a bean crop in Fassifern Valley, Queensland. And due to the location of the incidents and the current spread of the pest, as well as its biology, the Consultative Committee on Emergency Plant Pests has recommended that it is not technically feasible to eradicate this pest. Um, as I've discussed throughout this talk, these detections show just how important it is to check your crops regularly for signs of um, plant pests and diseases. So if you suspect a serpentine leaf miner infestation, report it to the Department of Primary Industries or Agriculture in your state or territory. You can do this by phoning the exotic plant pest hotline on 1800 081 or in Queensland 132523. Under Queensland legislation, everyone has an obligation to report exotic and notifiable pests. You can also stay up to date on these detections by visiting the New South Wales DPI's website and searching for serpentine leaf miner. Additionally, you can sign up to receive Ausveg's frontline e-bulletins and a link to that bulletin sign up page will be included in the post um, to webinar email. So I'd like to thank you for listening and like, I'd like to thank following groups for their involvement in our project. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to do half as much as we have done throughout the project. Um, and you can contact me here and any questions you might have about any of the um, discussion today, 
please put them in the Q&A.